Hey there guys, welcome to the channel. Today I want to discuss a simple tech tip on how to uh, clock your turbo. All right guys, for those of you who have played with turbochargers before, clocking a turbo is a very simple thing. But if you're somewhat new to the diesel industry and you're thinking about buying your first turbocharger, this may seem a little daunting how you actually line everything up. And it's actually very simple. So I want to go through how it works with this turbocharger here. Uh, also, I just want to clarify, we do sell drop-in turbos for second gen Dodges, third gen Dodges, but you still may have to align things to get it perfectly in your truck. Every truck's a little different. Second gen trucks are 20 years old. They've been in and out a lot, different turbos. So things don't line up perfectly. But it's very easy for you to do this in your garage. It's not hard to do. So I'm going to show you how to do it real quick. First thing you need to know is there's four bolts. Well, there's three, three main parts of the turbo. You have the compressor housing, which is this big aluminum thing here. You have your cartridge, which is the center section that holds your turbine wheel, your compressor wheel. That's where all the workings are. And then your turbine housing. So your turbine housing and your compressor housing are, are bolted onto the cartridge. And on a Borg Warner S300, like on our drop-in kits, uh, the, tur the bolts that hold them on are actually a 13 millimeter bolt. Uh, some, some of them feel a little loose and a half inch works better, but generally it's a 13 millimeter bolt that you'd use for these bolts. So what it is, there's four bolts right here and here and here and here that hold this onto the turbine housing. So when you buy a drop-in kit from us, the turbine housing on a third gen truck shouldn't need to be modified because it has a flexible drain and we can get it close enough here that you should be able to make that work in your house. But a second gen turbo, you may have to align a little bit because that drain is solid steel. So it needs to be pretty much perfect in order for it to get in there. So you may have to align it on your second gen trucks just a little bit. And let me just show you quickly how to do this. So what you do is you simply loosen these bolts. Do not take them out. There's little ears. This ear here, there's, there's two ears on the uh, turbine housing. And I think there's, yeah, there's four on the compressor housing. So you have four bolts and eight bolts. And these clamp the two pieces together. And so if you simply loosen them, you don't have to take them off, just loosen them. All right, now that I have this thing loose, you'll see it spins freely. So I did not take any of the bolts out. I just loosened them a little bit to make it so these tabs are no longer tight. They're not tight and they're flea folding a little bit. Hear me tapping it here, it moves. And so now I can freely position this. So on these second gen drop-in turbos that we provide, um, the Borg Warner SXE turbo comes with a discharge cast in here for a, for a silicone hose and a clamp. They're really cool because they left us this V-band, but it's not from the factory. You can't just, you have to actually machine that piece off. So we get these turbos in here and we actually machine this. We cut off the V-band or the hose discharge. And we put this in our mill and we V-band and we uh, machine the surface into it. And that's how we make this a drop-in, so it'll actually work with the elbow in your second in your 12-valve and 24-valve VP44 truck. So you machine that in right here, here in house. So what I do at this point is I would go and put this turbine housing onto your exhaust manifold. Um, install it, finger tighten it. You don't have to do anything crazy. Just kind of get it in place, finger tighten it, and then align your cartridge with your turbine housing. So turbine housing is locked in place. Get your oil drain where you want it. Usually it's straight up and down. If, if you need to angle it a little bit, that's fine to get clearance for your oil, oil drain, not a big deal. But align this, and then just get one of the bolts, you know, the ones you can easily have access to, and you can, you can really snug it, snug it down just tight. And then you'll no longer be able to move that part. Now the turbine housing is locked in with the cartridge, and now just my compressor housing moves. And when these are loose, you can, you're not going to hurt the turbo. They're designed to be able to do this. So don't worry about hurting nothing. You can move it around. So once the turbine housing and the cartridge are locked in place, now you want to just put your compressor housing where you want it. So you have your intake tube coming in, probably an elbow. Get this where it lines up real nice. Maybe even clamp it. But you don't want this too loose. You want it kind of snug before you clamp it because you want it good. So get it where you want it. And the same thing, just go under here, hit one or two of the bolts, get it nice and snug and then it'll lock it in place. Okay, now when that's locked in place, you can simply take the turbo off and then just go back and hit all your bolts. Uh, you can try to do this in place, a lot of people do. 
Um, if I'm doing a fresh turbo install, I find generally it's pretty quick to just put it in place and pop it back out. Especially on the third gen trucks, there's a couple of bolts that's really, really hard to get to with it in place. So I would just take this turbo, get it clocked as I said done here, as I've done here, get it clocked, get a line, then pull it back out and then tighten it all back up. To tighten these things back up, there is a torque spec, but it's hard to get a torque wrench in here. So if you have some neat tools that you can actually get stuff in here to torque it. On this guy here, you want about 20 foot pounds going into your turbine housing. And going into this aluminum compressor housing, really you want to be about 10 foot pounds. And so that's your torque spec. Um, get them good and snug. Snug, if you can't get a torque wrench in there, generally a pretty good, pretty tight fit. Without a torque wrench, it's going to be hard to know if you're going too tight. You don't want to strip out the aluminum. You're going to have a hard time with a 13 millimeter wrench stripping in the cast iron turbine housing, unless you're a real he-man, but don't, don't do that. Just get it really good and tight and uh, pretty good and snug over here and you should be good to go. Anyway, that is how you clock a turbocharger. There's lots of different ways to do this on an S300 series. It's with bands. On S400s, you have a V-band clamp. That's real slick. You have one bolt, loosen it, and it slides. I like those ones because they're real easy. But these ones are very good too. So anyway, give us a call. Hope this is helpful for those who needed it. And we'll see you next time.